In a world where local musicians and artists are unrated, underappreciated, unnoticed, battered, abused, and swept under the rug. Living show to show without secure benefits like medieval jesters. Run with the kittens. If you're actually listening to it right now, I played a song for my hamster that just died. Class. I like it. Underplayed and underpaid. Real local music. Use what you have. All the canned rock stuff. And the canned rock stuff too. Chuck wood around. We won't get into that. That was a good thing. Mondays at 6 p.m. What was special to me, really cool, amazing, incredible. Like, I need to rise up to this level. Phenomenal. Definitely incredible. Probably the coolest. Strong. You're a people Oh. <laughs> wow, you're killing me. I'll try not to swear. CFRU 93.5. Wow, the food was delicious. It had a smorgasbord of awesomeness. <laughs> It's not your, uh, your regular breakfast sausage. I also uh, ate some cocktail leaders and drank some melon liqueur one, one morning very early on the tour bus. All right, welcome to Underplayed and Underpaid. We've got a big show for you today. Rick Hall from Chronic Noise Entertainment is here. How's it going, everyone? Sweet. Chronic Noise Promotions. And, uh, yeah, I want to thank Del High for coming in last week, and uh, Gain Music Festival went off awesome. Woo! Did you, did you uh, yes. host the whole show? Uh, I mean, the no, whole floor? Host, host of the third floor, yeah. Wow, that was like, I mean, Jeremy and the Pink Band, eh? It was so great. It was the heavier <laughs> of the three floors, but, uh, yeah, it was dynamite. Yeah, for sure. I had a great time, and I hope everybody else uh, went and I, ho I hope that girl that won tickets last week, Anna, uh, had a great time, too. Um, so would you like to introduce yourself to the listeners, and uh, what do you do? Uh, hello, everyone out there. I am uh, Rick, I'm otherwise known as Uncle Rick, uh, on the scene. I am a promoter of uh, usually metal music, but uh, have been branching out a little bit. But uh, promoter around the southern Ontario scene, and... Uh, bringing bands to cities around and uh, and trying to showcase bands from said cities so and chronic noise promotions is how to find you uh, how to find your promotional company on yeah. facebook right i have a chronic noise group and a chronic noise promotions uh page for bands if they want to book or anything cool and uh well you obviously are well known in the guelph community uh by the, well, the local mm. metal scene especially uh and well I, I should say it saturday march 15th chronic noise presents um yeah, yeah. beware the uh sorry what's it called beware the ides of march can you explain that first uh just quickly that is uh march 15th is uh, uh if you know your shakespeare uh julius caesar was warned uh, by some crazy soothsayer <laughs> to be, beware the my, Ides of March, and then he was assassinated by Brutus and all of his uh, supposed friends, and you know. Voila, and so, uh, yeah, so this show is going to be featuring Auras, Islands and Empires, which is from Guelph, and Bring Me the Author and Take the Throne. That's all going down to the Red Papaya on sure March 15th. Is. Eight bucks, that's two bucks a band, and it's also all ages. Well worth it. Yeah, yep. it's going to be a great time. Gotta be. Uh, so, uh, well, I should ask, since we're talking about the red papaya, how much do you love Pad Thai? Oh, so much. Uh, so much so that while I was at Game Fest Friday night, <laughs> I walked over and I grabbed a couple Pad Thais. Oh, did <laughs> I did, to take home for the wife and I. No, it's, it's great. I highly endorse it. Right on. Um, what Guelph metal bands have really caught your attention? Lately or in general? Since you started, what do you say, six years ago? Six plus years ago. Um, right off the bat, uh, a, a band I'm hoping we can play a song of later on is uh, the Karma Cure. They were the very first band. Um, since then, there have been bands. Uh, my buddy Nick and Jeremy Pink uh, were both in, uh, and, and Derek uh, Cox was in uh, uh, Time the Destroyer. Also at that time, there was, uh, oh, geez, I can't, bands have changed names, but some of the young, they've turned into Seducing Medusa, which is a great young band mm -hmm. around town. Um, other members have went on to be in Wakeless, which is a great band. They're a standout band in my mind. Um, sure. There's just like, um, Advertise, or not, not all metal, but to me, heavy isn't just about fast chords or heavy chords, it's about the, the, the ambiance or the mood of the music a lot of times in Guelph mm -hmm. just has some stellar bands. Yeah. Cool. So how did you get tied in? Because you said, you, you told me on the drive here that uh, you really started off in London and you're yeah. from Tilsonburg or you're currently living yeah, in Tilsonburg? which is kind of halfway in between. I, I, I felt when I wanted to start um, 
if you don't mind, I, right when, when I first started, I was in a little hick town where we currently live, and I was putting on shows for young kids, uh, teenagers that were roughly my teenagers' ages, because if you don't give them something constructive to do and not to sound consent, condescending at all, but they're going to be throwing rocks through windows. So mm-hmm. we did a couple shows in the park, uh, Otter Fest 1, Otter Fest 2, and it kind of you know got big where we did a show in Norwich, another con- uh, connecting rural town. Next thing you know, I'm being asked by London bands to play to do shows so I found a venue the embassy which no longer exists it burned to the ground but it's had every great member once I started doing shows there I brought a Guelph band to London they were called the Karma Cure and also the Third Axis which had members of the Baxters and um, like I say Guelph is just a, there's something in the water that's for sure but anyway <laughs> at that point I was asked would I promote uh, or put on a show in Guelph by the drummer Matt HK of uh, now Mandroid Echo Star and I said sure but I don't know any venues he hooked me up and uh, you know the, the rest is history he actually started I started doing shows in the shadow through a fellow named uh, Jay Cloth oh yeah yeah so the shadow yeah the shadow it was uh, you know what it's sweaty a sweaty hole is a good place to be sometimes. <laughs> Let's just say well that. Well said, sir. Well said. How about we give the taste, a, a taste of the Karma Cure to the listeners in case they're not familiar with the band? That'd be awesome. Sounds good. All right. Here's the Karma Cure. We're going to pick a song called Ecliptic off of their MySpace page. MySpace, believe it or not. Yeah. So uh, enjoy that. Let's see if it works. And I'll be back in a couple with an interview on Underplayed and Underpaid at University of Guelph Community Campus Radio 93.3 FM.
Yeah, that was Ecliptic by the band The Karma Cure, who are now... Yeah, they've they've kind of evolved. I mean, I remember Uncle Rick, uh, recently you actually posted a bunch of old, old pictures, and I think I saw one with Adam from Mandroid was in it, and and that was The Karma Cure. Yeah. Yep. Oh, wow. So uh, did you want to talk about what the downfall, or did you want to skip uh, that and talk about other stuff? Uh, just a, a really fast on that. The Karma Cure was, uh, everybody will know them who's got their ears on right now. Um, they were a great young band that I was aspiring to be something. Uh, it morphed. Also, I should mention, the third Access was all, Access was also a band that had some Guelph fights in it, including Adam Richards and Stephen Richards, the brothers who are now in both in Mandroid. Mm-hmm. But they were in Karma... Uh, Stephen was in Karma Cure. So together, the, there's just like a family bond. I just feel like those guys, I couldn't be prouder if they were my own kids. So, I mean, now that I'm watching Mandroid grow into the, the monster that it is, mm-hmm. I'm just smiling. So, you know, as, as all of Guelph is. But I just wanted to say that about them. The R.I.P., the Karma Cure, but... Uh, Long live Mandroid. Yeah, there you go. Uh, so <clears throat> now that you've been doing this for a while, you know, bringing, bringing metal bands to Guelph, working with, uh, I believe, Gain Music, also you know, combined to put on shows and whatnot, um, what out-of-town bands are you proud to have brought here? Uh, there's lots because that was the main thing before I hooked up with Gain. So I would say I was, I'm terribly proud to have brought... Uh, um, Speak of the Devil was a band that there is now defunct, but Aaron Marshall from uh, Intervals, that he was a guitar player in that band I should put out, and I had in uh, the, the, the Shadow. But I am super proud of uh, In the Act of Violence, uh, Skynet, um, there's so many. Uh, I'm, almost, <laughs> I'm almost at a stutter right now because the bands uh, assassinate the following. Um, Again, there's just many, many bands, but there's uh, a few that I want to bring as well. Um, uh, uh, On Burning Empires, uh, The Healing from London, a great new band. Um, I want to bring uh, The After Image back um, because the last time they were here, they've had a little vocal change. So there's a lot of great, great new bands. And and, and I've had so many bands that have went on to, I'm proud to say that as big as they are now, I was at least to part of some of their very first shows some of those bands that i mentioned so um if a uh, what style of of bands would you be accepting of uh, having contact you um i would say that anywhere in between if i said heavy metal everybody's going to be sending stuff from punk to you know noise metal and and to be quite honest most of my uh, love for promoting shows I would put my most heart behind uh, any band that was heavy like a Slipknot and and Pantera right up to a progressive metal band some people call it Gent some, you know, a Dream Theater type band anything that's got a progression to it I love passion I love uh, even hardcore even punk any, any kind of music as long as it edges with metal where there's a feeling of um controlled chaos where you want to just break something but you know you, you don't actually but uh so, you know uh, metal core gent core death core i hate to use those terms and bands hate to hear them but those <laughs> types of band can contact chronic noise and we'll see if we can place you in somewhere if you got the chops well there you go and how does anybody contact mr rick hall of uh, chronic noise promotion you can uh you can uh, check out all of my information as far as phones and emails on my Facebook page, which would be easiest to contact me. So it would be either Rick Hall, uh, Facebook, Facebook.com, or it would also be Chronic Noise Promotions or the Chronic Noise group page. Any of the above, I'm checking them like a uh, stalker all the time, looking for new bands, looking for uh, to see what fans want. That's another thing. I think promoters are also... Um, kind of underrated when it comes to we want to know what you want because we'll bring that Mm -hmm. so so i'm also interested in that by the way all right and i just want to mention again that rick is throwing his next show which is saturday march 15th chronic noise presents uh auras islands and empires bring me the author and take the throne all the red papaya all ages eight bucks and uh yeah that was uh an interesting i mean (laughs) a shakespeare reference about (laughs) julius caesar you gotta love it um do you work alongside any other promoters in Guelph and uh, tell the listeners about the experiences with uh, uh, combining promotions in Guelph? 
uh, as I said when I first started, I'll just do a little recap. Uh, Jay Cloth, I didn't promote alongside him, but he was one of the main promoters for any heavy band that ever come along Guelph. Um, respectfully, I started promoting through him, through the shadow. Uh, recently, and probably only about a year into my six years in Guelph, um, I've been working with Game Music, who are just not only as good as family, but they're so music-minded on the same track as Chronic Noises in wanting, first of all, just a love of music, wanting to bring the best entertainment to a town. Um, I know that there's lots of other promoters in in uh, Guelph, and to be honest, I, I'm, I, I'm aware of like Fortnite, and um, th there's a handful more that right now I just can't think of, but Gain is the one that I concentrate working with because they do have one foot in the heavy door, which I'm fully into, and because of my love of overall music, they also they deal with everything from indie to pop to punk to singer songwriter, and I love all of that stuff as well. So I mean, and just FYI, you may see me branch off a little here and there and wonder what you know. WTF? Uh, Chronic Noise is doing an indie show or doing whatever. Uh, Gain Music and I have been working along, or I should say, and Chronic Noise have been working together side by side, whether people know it or not, for years now. And if a show is heavy, maybe it's all Chronic Noise. It might be Chronic with Gain helping. If there's a show like the, oh, who knows, like the Misery Signal show, that was a Gain Music um, that was supported by Chronic Noise. It, it's truly a community of music. And, and like I said, I'm not fully aware of the other promoters in town because I deal with heavy music, but Gain has been a blessing to work with and, and some guys where I know we're going in the same direction. We're on the same page. Have you met Jim Hare? I, somebody else asked me that, and I, I know the name, and I'm going to say that I've probably met him, but I don't recall, so enlighten me. He's actually taking over uh, the Guelph, uh, the Guelph slice of Badlands music, which was started oh, by Dylan Dawson. Yes, exactly. who, by the way, Great his guy. going away party is this evening at uh, Jimmy Jazz. It's called uh, oh, Go nice. Away, Dylan. <laughs> <laughs> I think I saw that. I'm going to slip by and do a shot with Dylan before I head home. Yeah, there you yeah, go. That's awesome. Uh, we're not promoting drinking, but no, we no, do, no. We do enjoy I'm a shot it of milk. ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, yeah, I imagine you'll be doing a show with with Jim Hare in the future, and uh, I will do my best to help hook you guys up together awesome. um game music festival you hosted the third floor on friday night uh what are your thoughts and what lasting impression did you leave with first of all like i said on my facebook page o m m f g it was just like it, it was i i love partying to start with and not endorsing a drinking or anything else i mean going good music good people just overall good times everybody respectful so much talent um what if i didn't even know gain music and i walked in that door i wouldn't believe that there was three floors all packed all different styles of music unique you know different genres but knowing gain it's i'm like i said we work together and i'm so proud not only to have been a part of it but just don't like what they did what they pulled off in a one night show i know other places st catherine's does scene fest everybody does something and it, I can, can imagine it takes a crap load of work to pull off but gain fest uh, Nick Weaver Liam <laughs> Frith and uh, and Chase Robs those three guys and so, so many other volunteers that that pulled together just like a finely tuned machine mm. um what bands stuck out? Because I saw you on various different floors checking out the different bands. I want, you know, I had Tearaway Tuza on my show a couple weeks ago. Love those guys. Oh, I saw you that, taking that, video. That, yeah, that interesting. That, that stood out. Um, like I said, I, I'm a heavy guy, so I would start my my bands up up top on the top floor. I'll, I'll whip those off fast. Uh, first of all, well, I mean, we had Great Lakes up there who were on my Chronic Christmas show at the Red Papaya. Mm -hmm. Great bunch of guys from Toronto, and we've brought them in, so I should give them a shout out. Great Lakes, they were so good. Um, nice to bring in new talent. Jeremy the Pink Band, they were just, oh my God, you yeah. know, like again, so, so great, interesting. I was saying stuff like, oh, they're like an instrumental uh, uh, Megadeth, like they're, they're a heavy metal, but no vocals, and you can really listen to the instrumentation, which also has a couple Mandroid dudes in it. Mm -hmm. um, Unbowed, Unbowed yeah. opened the show, and those guys are just like, you know, hey, hey, hey. I mean, there's nothing like feeling that the old doom and gloom, uh, especially at my age. Mm. That's, you know, I was kind of raised on bands like cathedral and and stuff like that in the day and but uh, but, but 
and, and CDs, yeah, X Manine guys, which, I mean, I had a Manine Alexis on Fire split CD years ago and never listened to Manine for a long, the longest time. And then when I finally did, I was like, oh my God, how, this is so great. And to see those guys play, I had never seen, met any of them before as long as I've been on the scene. And they were just such a pleasure to watch. So, um, um, Oh, the, the songs were very, they were deep, you know what I mean? Like you, sometimes you'll listen to something and it feels like a surface song and, and then other songs, they just go right through you. They resonate and uh, the C's, if anybody missed that or if you want to check them out, C's.com on, uh, on uh, Facebook, check their page out because they were so great. But mm. uh, a lot of bands on the other floors too, uh, the Howling, cur uh, formerly the Howling, uh, Common Deer, uh, that's in this month's uh, Music Lives, they were, uh, if you haven't seen them before, cellos, violins, keyboards, and uh, just some great music, uh, Bowsia, um, I can't, again, my mind, I was running from floor to floor, just happy to catch, there was something different on every floor. It wasn't boring anywhere. There was appreciative people. And like I said, I think it's, uh, it's, it's you couldn't have done a better job other than having different bands on there, which would have just brought forth more merriment like i mean it was it was flawless i thought yeah i definitely enjoyed it and i mean they're getting i don't know about any bugs but they got all the bugs out that's for sure yeah. this was the fourth year that they've done it uh yeah shouts out to nick weaver for uh, really pulling everybody together put it all yeah i mean and thanks also to conrad aitken who yes. owns van goes here for allowing them to do it on a friday this yeah, year great guy yeah all right well uh again saturday march 15th chronic noise is throwing a show with the red papaya with auras islands and empires bring me the author and take the throne at red papaya yeah, yeah. eight bucks how about we give the listeners a little taste of auras sound good awesome all right so this is a song called adverse condition by auras on their facebook Sit page tuned. So uh, enjoy, and we'll, back to, we'll be back with Rick Hall from Chronic Noise uh, to chat in a few.
You're listening to Underplayed and Underpaid. That was a song, Adverse Condition by Auras, who are performing at the Red Papaya on March 15th. That's a Chronic Noise Presents show, uh, eight bucks. And they're also playing with Islands to Empires, Bring Me the Author, and Take the Throne. Uh, we're going to be playing a little bit of, you know, we'll see. We'll see who we can all cram in here. I got Rick Hall live in the station for an interview, and I want to thank you. Pardon me? I said peace to the chronics. Peace to the chronics of noise. Uh, yeah, and uh, again, thanks for coming in. Um, thanks for having me. Uh, we were just talking about the Gain Music Festival. Um, are you still going to stick to promoting only metal? Or are you going to, because uh, we were talking about, you know, possibly contacting Cantina. Yeah. And maybe, you know, yeah, I mean, no, that, that would I, be a big, big change. Right? I, I would love to uh, promote some other stuff. I think I originally wanted to get a good metal fan base as to not alienate people to let them know what I primarily do. And uh, I think music's like food, and you don't like just one type of food. I decided uh, a little while ago that I would try throwing the odd rock show. I promote shows in Brantford occasionally. We try a rock show or try a hip-hop show or have a hip-hop artist open one of my metal shows and just kind of toy with that. And as I said earlier, gain music, having full... Uh, enjoyment of, of all the indie and rock and pop and everything, it makes it obvious to me that if a band that I like writes me and they happen to be a good rock and roll band, I'll message Gain and we'll see if we can co-promote a show and invite that band in and show them what they got and match them with some locals that would be, you know, like tight bands. Yeah, definitely. And uh, if you're one of those bands who just happens to be listening because you're not from Guelph, so you might be bringing a bigger, wider audience to this show right, right today. Um, Go to musiclives.ca and check out the bands and the band the band listings because you know that's how you can really start to put together a show on your own and you know figure out dates and and contact promoters and whatnot. Musiclives.ca, I highly recommend everybody check it out, especially yes. if you want to know what's going on with live music in this town of Guelph, the royal city of music. Um, <clears throat> what venues have you had the pleasure of throwing shows at? Uh, in, in, in Guelph. In Guelph. I uh, have, like I said, started off at The Shadow. I went down and did uh, quite a few vinyl shows. We've done a couple in uh, Jimmy Jazz and then across the street at, uh, at uh, Van Gogh's Ear. Uh, a, a great venue is uh, ANAF. Uh, shout out to Mark there and all of the staff. Everybody is great people there. Um, they opened their doors to us a couple years ago, and we did some really good shows there. And and I wanna, I, I feel, <laughs> I feel a little bad not actually doing as many there. But I don't know whether it's off the beaten path or we just haven't reached out to get enough people out that way. But uh, Army Navy Air Force Club, if anybody uh, they're looking for members, always by the way, a shout out for them. And and also. Um, it, it's a great little place to have if any bands are looking to put on shows or if they find a local promoter there are small venues another one is the e-bar uh, I've used um, it in co-promoting with Gain uh, Red Papaya which I'm currently using for most of the metal shows and uh, it's just a shout out to Jill and all of the staff there that is and, and yourself of course uh, being uh, instrumental to me stepping in there and setting up doing what we're doing right now you've been a big help and, and every venue I think people don't realize a lot of times venues um, you know they're kind of behind the scenes of everything but their allowance of letting I do a lot of all ages shows that they're all they're mixed all age 19 plus but honestly um, the, my, my I started doing all ages and if these shows didn't permit the all ages to come in for the heavier music I think the the attendance would be a little lower because let's face it it's a lot of possibly under 19s that are liking heavy, heavy metal and they they come out and they'll be of drinking age and they'll you know go to those bars eventually but uh, that though that all of these bars that I mentioned would let under 19s come in we mark them appropriately it's safe it's controlled um, you know and and I can honestly say that the kids that do come in that are under 19 they're, they're absolutely no problem they're a joy to work with so so uh, so proud to work with them so all the shows are all ages 19 plus and all of the venues um, cater to that that I've mentioned anyway uh, I know that there's quite a few more in Guelph and we are always kind of branching out but that bunch right there uh, I, I couldn't be happier with and couldn't say enough good things about the management and the staff there because they understand that um, music 
is goes a lot hand in hand with passion and instead of them being judgmental of someone's look or or the sound of the music they're very uh you know they they work with us on it so mm. so kudos to all of the the venues that i mentioned by the way and there you go all right we're let's give uh, the listeners a little taste of what they're going to expect coming up march 15th with a band called islands and empires who are formerly uh farewell to freeway yeah there you go and uh yeah shouts out to chris and everybody that's involved with that so uh on underplayed underpaid enjoy the song visions by islands and empires we'll be back in a couple with an interview with rick hall from chronic noise and empires this song is called visions you're listening to underplayed and underpaid on university of guelph community campus radio cfru.ca or 93.3 fm in guelph uh yeah well that's uh, uh a favorite 
uh, Islands and Empires. Make sure you check them out. We, uh, we also interviewed them on Underplay and Underpaid uh, a little while ago, actually. So you can always go into the archives at CFRU.ca and find that as you can. And uh, i got Rick here, Rick Hall from uh, Chronic Noise Promotions. Uh, and, yeah, we've been just shooting the breeze, as they say. Um, so let's continue on with this uh, well, interview. Uh, do you come from a musical background? Uh, yes, self-taught, but I started strumming around on the guitar around campfires and things like that, and uh, self-taught on drums, and I actually want to shout out a lifelong friend who, because I'm an older fella and we're still friends to this day, Drew Masters, <coughs> come from the little hick town I did in Burford, Ontario, and he's resided in Toronto and had a quite a great magazine in the 80s called Meat Magazine. It was an acronym for metal entertainment around Toronto, and he interviewed and toured with everybody from like the Scorpions, Kiss, um, The Who, anybody that came to town he was either uh, booking them, interviewing them for his magazine and that kind of got my foot in the door. Um, I got married early and give up the bands so I was just messing in bands but I started doing some kind of uh, uh, interviews and record reviews in his magazine and posted a few of those and just thought I, w I always want to kind of stay connected with the music so this fella from Toronto is basically uh, was an inspiration for me jumping back into it again I guess so yeah there you go and um, before modern metal what really you know when you were growing up what really got you interested in music and how did you evolve to where you are today? Uh, the start of my heavier, darker days, pre-metal, would have been Alice Cooper, that type of uh, glam, dare to be different type of metal. Um, anything that was, I mean, at that time, you know, you're young, you want to do something to kind of peeve your parents off and, and, and go in a rebellious way, but then it wasn't long before I realized that I truly, truly, it wasn't to make anybody mad. Is I, I love the aggression of it and bands like, I said, Alice Cooper, but I went off to Deep Purple, um, Judas Priest, uh, Black Sabbath, of course, Led Zeppelin, and I went through a whole array of 70s bands, Boston, Styx, Super Tramp, blah, 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 but I'm really big on progressive and heavy. So my pre my earlier bands, Rush is one I never mentioned. So, right on. And well, <clears throat> you were familiar with uh, some of the guys in a band called Pure Blank that are getting back together. Yes. And uh, I'm having them come in on March 31st That's for an interview. So great. So great. yeah. So uh, uh, and there's actually the new issue of Music Lives magazine, which you have in front of you here. Yes, sir. Uh, there's an interview with Byron Gillespie, who is the lyricist of the band. And I hope that everybody out there can go find themselves a, a copy of this issue and check out the interview because. That's kind of an interesting. I mean, tell me about when we were driving here. I picked you up and brought yeah. you here in my car. You're like, who's Pure Blank and and da da da. Yeah. So, uh, what was your experience with uh, or lack thereof with Pure Blank? Yeah, actually, Pure Blank is somebody that I just stumbled across. So it's kind of like a new gem to me and old to everybody else. They're like, oh, they're an older band. That was this guy and this guy. And uh, and when I find out that it was you know it was a D Walk and from from the start of that was that uh, actually when I met D Walk and all of those guys, they were another bands, Arise and Ruin, him and Ben Alexis, uh, Brent Munger, um, I don't know all the fellas in Pure Blank, but uh, when I came into town, that band had already went defunct. Just a little while ago, I saw them post something, I jumped out of my skin thinking it was something brand new and that I had this new toy I was going to bring to Guelph, and they're, and they're laughing, they're like, no, no, we're an older band and you know we're working stuff out now, and as Brian said, uh, you know they're going to be in the studio doing an interview, and uh, hopefully they'll be doing some chronic noise shows in the future. But uh, those are all guys that have been on the scene for many years. For sure, for sure. Yeah. So, you know what? Let's give them a taste of Pure Blank. How about right we do on. that? Let's do all some right. Pure and Blank. We're going to have Pure Blank on underplayed and underpaid on March 31st. And they're playing also at Van Gogh's Ear. First show in 10 years. That's a Friday night on April 4th. So, uh, yeah. Sweet. Here's a little taste of Pure Blank on underplayed and underpaid, University of Guelph Community Campus Radio.
heard it here. That was a song by Pure Blank, who I'm going to have probably roll into the next song. I cut it off. All right, so yeah, that was a song, Geometry of a Recluse by Pure Blank. They're going to be uh, yeah, doing a 10-year reunion, uh, two shows, right? One in Hamilton, one in Guelph. Yep. At Van Gogh's Ear on April 4th, they will be live. And uh, yeah, make sure you check out the interview at Music Lives Magazine with Byron Gillespie. Etc. Etc. And also, yeah. Well, Brent, the drummer from Wakeless, yep. is also in Pure Blank. He's yep. got a show at nine o'clock tonight called the Fuzz Radio Show. You right. Check it out. Yeah. Yes, I have actually checked it out. It's great. Right on. In your opinion, Rick, since I got you here, uh, what is Guelph's best looking metal band? Best looking metal band. <laughs> You know what? I'm going to have to say Mandroid Echo Star. All right. Yeah. That's fair. Uh, beards and hair. Like, exactly. They got it all going on. Exactly. Um, beard Talk, while we're on Beard Talk, uh, explain what your beard design is like to the listeners, and does it have a name? Uh, you know what? I don't really think it has the name <laughs> other than maybe the whip. But uh, <laughs> if, if I had to coin it as something, no, it was uh, it was born of laziness, and uh, and rather than cutting it off, I wanted to be just like bands I like. I wanted to try to try do something unique. Wrapped it up one night. My wife goes, "Hey, that looks awesome." And if it's got the wife's approval, I'll try it outdoors, and it's... <laughs> and Captain Lou Albano is reborn. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, again, uh, Dylan's going away show with tonight at the party at the Jimmy Jazz, so make sure you're there. Paul McLeod, is, he's... Uh, put together a specific list the, that he wants to play for Dylan and people are all coming out so if you love uh, sorry, if you hate to love Dylan or if you love to hate him that's the place to be um, it's that time of show let's go to musiclives.ca here's what's going on over the next week at musiclives.ca uh, alright so Paul McLeod at the Jimmy Jazz and uh, CFRU 93.3 host underplayed and underpaid that's today that's the, the 10th okay the 11th that's Tuesday Brad Hall's uh, solo piano at Manhattan's and also Maddie P at Doogie's in Guelph Wednesday the 12th Red Brick Session hosts the March live music series with Nikki Machen at Red Brick Cafe she's a lovely person uh, John Zadro a solo piano at Manhattan's and every Wednesday Music Lives hosts name that tune at Jimmy Jazz so if you enjoy potent potables and you like getting them gratuit because you're good at music trivia that's the place to be on Thursday the 13th uh, 20 kilometer jazz diet at Manhattan and Diane Roblin and uh, 292 at Silence. Uh, Global Youth Network hosts fundraiser for Kenya at the Red Papaya in Guelph. And Mike Something is at the Doogies in Pablo's in Guelph. And also that's open mic night at the Army-Navy Air Force Club. And uh, they are an official uh, a venue that is now connected with musicalist.ca. So that's another thing. If you're a promoter or sorry, if you are a bookings person or a manager of a restaurant and you want to be involved, get a hold of musicalist.ca and get your... Uh, your venue profiled there because it's just something you should do. Uh, 14th, that's Friday, north of Seven's Return at Van Gogh's Ear and Cellos and I Smell Blood at the Jimmy Jazz. Also, Kazoo hosts Island's Gregory, uh, Gregory Pepper and his problems at all TBA, sorry, and TBA all at the E-Bar. I'm tripping over my words. Uh, on the 15th of Saturday, the Diggles, the Diggles are at Manhattan's and Chronic Noise Promotions hosts Islands and Empires, Auras and more at the Red Papaya Guelph. And uh, again, if you if you click on any of these events, all the information comes up as to door times, cover charge, you know, band links to you know there are other profiles so you, you can check out the music, et cetera, et cetera. So that's definitely something you should do. Uh, wrapping it up here on the 16th, that's Sunday. Stan Chang solo piano at Manhattan's, and uh, Ronin is at Silence. Also, a prepared guitar workshop with Nilan Pereira at Silence, and Nathan Coles hosts. The open stage at the Jimmy Jazz. So sign the, the list. The stage is yours. And uh, Double D Sundays with D, Eve Archer, and Dave Hubert Doogies and Guelph. That's what's going on uh, with live music over the next week at musiclives.ca. And that's all encompassing Guelph. So getting back to the interview that I got here with Rick Hall. Uh, we're just kind of running out of time here. Uh, I want to mention Turtle Shell Studios. If you know anybody that's interested in doing a little live series, live video and everything, uh, all done live, Turtle Shell Studios is awesome. Um, also, uh, um, did you see that? I don't know if you saw this, but uh, there's a company that has n now started creating uh, Vladimir Putin butt plugs. Is that right? Yes. I saw that today, and I laughed, and I laughed. Just think about his reaction. <laughs> My first thought is, uh, I don't use butt plugs, but if I did, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I would get a, a Vladislav Putin. Your Putin butt plug, yeah. right? Just yeah. the name rolls off the Putting it right tongue. in there. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Uh, something that I, I wanted to bring up is, uh, what do you get when you cross a joke with a rhetorical question? Moving on. Um, what's your favorite album of all time? 
Uh, if I had to just off the top of my head, uh, Rush twenty one twelve. Yeah, it's and got some heavy stuff. It's uh, got some progressive stuff. It's got some nice light, lilty, atmospheric, ambient stuff. It's just got a little bit of everything. So Desert Island Rush twenty one twelve. All right. And uh, well, something I'd, I'd like to ask everybody uh, when I'm wrapping up the interview or getting close to the end. If you could have dinner with anyone from any time, who would it be and why? I would probably say myself 25 years from now or any number of years from now just because, A, to find out if I would show up. <laughs> and, uh, and interestingly enough, if I did, I would ask uh, an array of questions uh, as to maybe how I survived that long and, uh, and what stuff was like at the time and did I think I would make it that long. And if, if you weren't actually still alive, would you be interested in having an interview with yourself, sorry, a dinner with yourself posthumously? Uh, no, because personally, <laughs> I, I think that I would just be a bag of fertilizer at that point, so, which wouldn't respond back. So, <laughs> Right on. Well, we're going to drop a song here by Bring Me the Author. Don't know if we'll have any time to chat afterwards, but uh, thank you very much, Rick Hall, for coming hey, in. Brian. Bring Me the Author is one of these special guests that is performing March 15th at the Red Papaya alongside Auras and Islands and Empires and... Take the Throne. Take the Throne. All right. So uh, an underplayed and underpaid University of Guelph Community Campus Radio... Here's Bring Me the Author, and uh, enjoy. I'm 